Welcome to Eagle Live. What a break from Manoa. Interviewing your favorite USA Eagles around the globe. Tony Lambeau into the 22. Now, here's your host, Bill Baker. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Eagle Eyed. When you get a moment, please like, subscribe, follow, share with your friends, and leave a review. I'd appreciate it. Now, this episode of Eagle Eyed, I have Toyota Cheetah's number nine, Ruben de Haas. Uh, Ruben and I talk about his contract with the Saracens, which begins in July, and also uh, the recent games he's had with Curry Cup with the Cheetahs, uh, this preparation series right now in South Africa, uh, and also some of the future news, USA Rugby, and also um, uh, he's looking forward to joining teammates uh, Will Hooley and KP at Saracen. So, nice quick interview. Hope you enjoy. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Just in training and stuff. We've uh, The Cheetahs have had this franchise cup going on. So, it's only four games, so we have two left. I'm hoping to get some, some game time, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, no doubt. And it's also, what, the shoot, was it end of summer? I was just thinking about Is that what it is down yeah, there right now? It's, yeah, it's starting to cool down, but it's still it's very hot here. Very, very still hot, hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was sitting here earlier, I was thinking, okay, that must have been an odd transition when you moved from Arkansas to South Africa, you know, just not just the heat, but then, you know, a different summer. I don't know. It's just strange to me. <laughs> yeah, we were like, when we try to, like, if we have a training session at like 830 in the morning, <laughs> It's like, gee, it feels like it's twelve o'clock outside. It's very, very hot. Oh boy. So, so Ruben, let's talk cheetahs. Um, you said you're in training right now, but um, not being offered a spot in the Pro 14, Pro Pro 16. You know, how devastating was that for not only players like yourself, but for the organization? Yeah, I think obviously for the cheetahs, it, it wasn't ideal, but. Um, I'm sure they'll figure a way out to get back into uh, into uh, a big competition or something like that. And the, the tough part for the Cheetahs is, like, if you go back to the Super Rugby Unlocked, we had a, from Super Rugby Unlocked until the Curry Cup, there was 11 guys that left. So it's hard to uh, build continuity in a team and keep your team going. And obviously with, with the European teams, like, they're, they were pretty much all over the guys at the Cheetahs. So... It's 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 been hard for the Cheetahs and the organization, but I think if you look at the history, like there's a lot of Springboks that's come out of out of the Cheetahs union. So I think the yeah. Cheetahs have, they have such a rich history, so they'll always find a way to be there. And yeah, I I really just hope they can find their feet again. And they, there's like a, they're speaking about a Continental Cup. Um, who knows if that'll happen? But I really hope hope uh, the best for the Cheetahs and. But yeah, they have too many too many quality players not to be playing in a quality competition. Yeah, absolutely. And and you speaking of the super limited uh, super rugby limited. So for you, you were getting some you were getting some minutes during that competition, um, but your minutes really started to add up during the Curry Cup, especially near the end of the season where you got a few consecutive starts. Um, you know, how was that for you? How was that for your your confidence level to get those minutes and score tries that kind of thing? I think yeah, for me it was I was always waiting. I was just, and I just want to play, give me some game time. That'd be amazing. But I think uh, yeah, like you said, I got a few starts and stuff. And for the the Springboks that are playing in the local in South Africa still, it's it's massive for me because obviously those guys won the World Cup uh, in 2019. So you want to match yourself against those guys and see how you do. And obviously, you're, for me as being young, you're like wow, this guy's a Springbok and he's like playing against a guy like Dwayne Vermeulen or like just even with Ron Stein and the Ron Pinar, you're just like, you're amazed. But it just it just helps your confidence. And like when I was on the field in the few first few games, I was a little bit like, I was just like, I don't want to force anything or do anything wrong. But then obviously you get more comfortable and then you feel like, listen, I can play with these guys. So yeah, just go ahead and do what you do. Well, and speaking of that, you know, when you're first getting in some minutes, you, know, you said just right there that you're worried about making mistakes. Now, if, looking back at that, I mean, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that hold you back as well? Yeah. Yeah, I think obviously you, maybe. I think, yeah, maybe it has a, I think it's more like a mind thing. You're just like, well, this is yeah. obviously being playing at the World Cup and stuff. But you're, again, you're like, well, this is a big stage. Like you're playing against quality yeah. rugby players. So. You have to be like your mindset has to be. You have to be switched on every second of the game. But you, the more you, the more game time you get, the more comfortable you feel. And then 
like for me it's like if you have confidence you're playing well then it, it just gets easier and easier it does yeah so right now you're in the i think what what's what's the competition called right now the like preparation fixtures um, yeah it's just the preparation cup it's just it was it's just four games no semis and finals i think yeah. it's just to get some more it's actually just to give younger guys a chance to play this seems like the competition for them to get ready for South Africa's tours coming up this summer. Yeah. So have you felt at all as kind of the odd man out, not just because you're not qualified for South Africa, but because obviously you're moving on soon? Yeah, obviously I think it's it's a tough spot for me because obviously yeah. I don't want to go to the coach and be like, listen, I'm training hard, please give me a shot to play. Like if I, if I train hard and I'm training well, give me a shot. But obviously they also have to look forward um, and build their team for the future. So it's it's a difficult spot to be in, and, and it's understandable. All right, now let's talk Saracens. So, congratulations on your deal with them. Um, what are you looking What are you looking forward to most about your move to London? Man, I just so when my agent came to me, he's like, Saracens, uh, they they are interested in, in in me and stuff like that. I was I was blown away. So, obviously, with the success they have and the amazing culture and team they are. Um, I just think it's, it's, I don't, if you go to any rugby player in the world and they're, in, and they, you say to them, listen, Saracens wants you to come, I think they're going to be like, yeah, I'm going for sure. So I'm really just excited to, just to be able to work with the coaches and, and again, play with high quality players. And I think when you're playing with high quality players, your game just raises. Right. And, and also you're joining your Eagle teammates, uh, Will and KP. Have you had any conversations with them or did you before you signed? Um, no, so like I'm not sure if they knew they were going to sign me or not, but um, uh. Will, Will and KP just messaged me and said uh, I heard you're talking to Sarah and stuff, and Will kind of Will Will said yeah I heard they're talking to a few other nines as well, so I didn't know if it would <laughs> happen, but <laughs> but yeah, so I talked to them some, but I'll I'll catch up with them in a few. Hopefully we have tests and stuff, so I'll get to catch up with them again before before I head over. Now, were there other clubs you were talking to that you could discuss about? Um, no, there weren't any. The thing, like with the Cheetahs getting kicked out of the out of the Pro 14, we had a deadline to if you wanted to leave, you could you could sign before a certain date. So what's interesting uh -huh. is Saracens, um, like they, my my agent told me two weeks before that deadline, Saracens they were interested wow. in me, and they actually sent my contract like a day before that deadline happened so i had to literally sign the papers and tell the coach at the cheetahs listen i'm leaving a day before the deadline so it was <laughs> right on the edge <laughs> oh, so when is that so when do you make the move north um i have my contract starts the first of july now have you had any conversations with gary about uh possible camps coming up or any uh, kind of no. schedule possibilities no we have we haven't heard anything I've just been seeing stuff in the news and stuff, but we haven't heard yeah. anything. Yeah, I know. It's funny seeing all that going around. And um, <laughs> there's only so much you all know as players and as coaches. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, and it's it's kind of, you know, as you look at fans and players, everyone's just dying to see rugby played yeah. in a USA jersey. But up here in the States, yeah. any kind of rugby, which, you know, kicks off soon in, yeah. in Major League. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, yeah. um, do you follow the Major League Rugby at all, Ruben? Yeah, I do. Obviously, with all the Eagles, a lot of the Eagles guys playing there, and um, yeah, I'm actually really excited to see that kick off. And I think it's good for all the guys in the states to be able to play rugby again because I think when last did they get to play rugby a year ago? So I think they're all probably very excited to be able to play again. Well, I'm so, I'm excited for you also because I'm I'm hoping as you are uh, that Saracens do get promoted back to Premiership. Mm -hmm. um, and another reason is not just because of the level of play you'll be playing at, which yeah, equates into a higher level of USA play, but you could be a week in and week out playing against, say, AJ McGinty or, you know, playing with Will and KP or playing against Greg Peterson, assuming everyone's still in the league next year. I mean, is that, have you even thought that far yet? No, nah, no, not really. Like, obviously, I know those guys <laughs> are playing in the Prem, but um, it would obviously be amazing to be playing in the Prem and against those guys. I mean, geez, the way AJ's been playing lately, he's been on fire, so. It would, be, it would be awesome to be able to play against them as well. Well, hey, Ruben, listen, it's been great to touch base with you, to find out more about the contract of Saracens, and, you know, good luck. I'm, I'm hoping to see you on the pitch with Cheetahs the next couple weeks. Awesome. Uh, Thank but you. thanks again for joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much.